I'm really excited to have Louise Dorrit with us because you know what? You all liked her so much when she joined us at the conference last year that we decided we had to have more of her. So welcome, Louise. Thank you, Lisa. And I'm in Nam in Melbourne on Wurundjeri Wurrung country of the Kulin Nation. So I want to acknowledge that, that they have been here for 60,000 years plus singing and, and dancing uh, with music with their children for all that time. I'm on dark and young country and I reckon they've been doing the same up here as exactly. well. Exactly. Um, listen, you know, like given that you're a musical and theatrical, you know, extravaganza, why is music so important to you to use in your, the early childhood, early education and care space? You know, why? Because music is part of life. All of you in family daycare, who would use music as you know, in part of celebrations, part of everyday or special occasions? It's, it's in us and we don't have to teach music. It's creating an environment that encourages children to, to enjoy music. And music, it, it has the capacity to transport children to another, to be another person or to do another space. If they're having a bad day, they can switch off. Music is, um, it can change the mood. So if we want children up and dancing, we'll put on fast music. If we want children to relax or at sleep time, we'll put, on, we'll put on slow, peaceful music. There's no right or wrong. Anyone can do it. And you know that proverb, uh, if you can sing, you can, if you, um, what is it? Uh, if you can walk, you can dance. If you can talk, you can, you can sing. But a Zimbabwe proverb, however, I take it a step further because babies can't walk. But if you can breathe, you can you can sing if you can move you can dance so it's it's just so powerful and and there's so much learning oh my goodness beats and rhythms and and I meant to get this it's pre-literacy even our early years learning framework says the definition of literacy una momento just stay there I'll just get my early years learning framework and my framework school age care and I will just show you where it says it it's because when parents say oh I want you to teach my children to read well what we're doing today with the rhymes and the chants and the music is pre-literacy so in there let me just read it out to you and I'll what I'll do Lisa I'll do a handout of the songs that I do and all of this Oh, I'll hand wow. that and I'll email it to you. That'd be wonderful. Um, literacy in the early years, literacy includes a range of modes of communication, including music, movement, dance, storytelling, visual arts, media, and drama, as well as talking, reading, writing. So, how is that in our Bible, our Quran, our Torah, whatever you like to, to call it? So, I mean, I could go on. I was in. Um, I was in theatre before I started early childhood and that was my profession and then I needed extra money and so I started working as a reliever in a long daycare centre and then the rest is history. I thought, oh, I love this. So then I went and got my qualifications. However, I embed music every day. I don't have a music session as such, it's embedded. It's during routines. It's during transitions. It's while I'm changing a baby's nappy. It's inside, outside, walking along the street. So it doesn't have to be that group time. It doesn't have to be the music and movement corner over there. It's actually embedded. Yeah. <laughs> Louise, you that may... answer your question? Yeah, it sure did. But you may be the only person in Australia that became an educator because you needed additional money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I was, I was a Shows waiter. how badly was, theatre performers are paid. It's, exactly. Well, I was in children's theatre but worked at a restaurant at night and then a friend who I shared a house with uh, said, oh, they're looking for relievers and it was back in the day before you needed a working with children check, police check or any qualifications. So, and thank goodness they changed that because, you know, of yeah. course we need to lift the bar in family daycare we need to increase qualifications. So I'm pleased that Family Daycare 
educators have to have at least certificate three. And I know a lot of you have diploma and degrees as well. So, so yes. can you just tell me, you know, like I kind of figure that there's some educators that this is their jam. They love music. Oh. They, you know, do a million things a day with music. But I know if I became an educator, I'd go, I know no songs. I'm terrible. I've been singing my daughter the same three songs most of her life, you know. I just, I'm not musical, you know, despite the fact yeah. I love music. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. If I was to become an, become an educator, what should be in my musical bag, you know? Oh, like, well, I mentioned just a minute ago that every educator needs a working with children check and a police check and at least a certificate three. However, I believe they need a class set of maracas and a class set or, you know, a um, seven sets, seven of these clapping sticks. So definitely those. So and I only- the maraca? What, they're egg maracas because if you give a baby, if you give a baby one of these or a, an infant or a toddler or a, and you you don't tell them to shake it, but if you might might start singing "Roly Poly, Roly Poly, up up up," they might just go just to the beat. You never say no, not like that. Don't you use the beat? You give them to to the child, and it's just something for them to do, and they can hear the music. So you can be singing all the songs that you normally sing, and or you give them one of these, and they can clap the beat as well. If you so can where afford, do I get egg maracas from? From anywhere, educational experience, all of them. Same okay. with these. If you can afford it, you would buy Aboriginal um, claves and clapping sticks and you would just have one of those. But if you uh, can't, these or broomstick, broomsticks from Bunnings and chop them. I've actually got those here. Have a look at this. Because I teach, oh, I teach music. Would you believe I've never had a music lesson? So I have to say I do not. I've, I do not know how to. Um, my brother learnt guitar and I learnt dance, and that was that. So I've never had a lesson. However, it's um, I teach music, which is bizarre, but anyone can use non-tuned percussion. This is non-tuned percussion. Any non-tune percussion is if you shake it or if you slap it. And so I first started teaching at a swim burn and I said to the person that asked me, oh, no, I, I don't, I, I can't read music. I don't. They said, no, we want you. We see what you do. You do all those little songs and, and that's what we want because educators, we're not there to teach them uh, the violin. We want them to be able to transfer the skills to children on placement, to children in family daycare, to children in outside school hours. So I started there, then I taught music at the uni, and now I teach music to Aboriginal students at Deakin, would you believe? But I, I teach the Western, and they have to bring in their Aboriginal culture if they, or they have to seek it because we have ruined it for them in the last 230 years. So this is what the students made. They were broomsticks and they used flame on the stove and they uh, um, you know, painted beautiful, They're beautiful pictures. Yeah. So that's what they use. So I've got a whole heap of those as well. And so you're saying you've got to at least have one set of egg maracas and one set of clapping sticks per yeah, child. Seven. Yeah, seven, yep. seven of these or 14 of these and seven of those. Or you make these are these are plastic bottles, never use food because there's so many, you know, it's culturally sensitive. There's so many um, families that food is such a precious resource. Well, it is a precious resource. So put in little scones. So it can be, you know, that to tat tat. Who is that? Ooh, grandma's pussy cat. So you give these to the children. And of course, you make these are their paintings. So what we did. Children painted and then we they chose a bottle and then we went out to the gravel and we put stones in it. So that was that was those. So show me, you know, like give us a bit of a performance. Show me something. Okay. So with because theatre is my background, I always use props. 
So I might put my, and everything, most things are from the op shop or if they're Aboriginal, I make sure I buy them from Yarn Strong Sister or an Aboriginal education um, consultancy. But otherwise, everything is from the op shop or people have given them to me. So I might put my red sock, my red um, gloves on. Uh, can you put your gloves on, your pretend gloves on, please, uh, Lisa? And everyone else, put your pretend gloves. Can I see them? Can I see? Thank you very much. Normally, yeah, okay, ready? I have 10 little fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do things. Would you like to see? I can shut them up tight, open them up wide, clap them together and make them hide. Put them up high. Put them down low. Fold them like this and fold them so. So if you're about to read a story and they might be making a lot of noise, instead of saying, shush, be quiet, shush, I'm not going to do it, just put your gloves on and you start doing that. The babies will start doing <laughs> like that. And then I just take them off. So I just, that's, or I might say, who can see the rectangle box that's red with white spots or white with red spots? Can anyone see it behind me? Oh, and there's my, you can see my egg maracas there. Yeah. <laughs> so can you see? All right. So one of the children will go and get it. I wonder what's in there. And this is my theatre background. So I always use a prop because that, that once again transports them to another place. It's exciting. It's something different. And those of you who are nervous about singing, which is nuts because children don't care at all, as long as you're having fun, they can smell if you're not having fun. So if you're going to have fun, well, then children will have fun. So let's have a look. What is in this box? I wonder what's in the box. Let's have a look. I think there's nice chocolates. Let's see. Oh, for goodness sake, they're dirty black socks. I thought they were choppers. Now, where do we normally put our socks? We put them on our feet, but today we're going to put them on our hands. So here we are. There's some for you, Lisa. Some for you, Jenny, Fatima, Khadija, Geshi, and Moon Chopper. Everyone's got some. Now put them on. Can I? And I know you wanted you wanted pink wasabi, but bad luck, they're all black. So put your pretend socks on. Lisa, have you got yours on? Ready? Black socks, they never get dirty. The longer you wear them, the stronger they get. Just when I thought I should wash them, a voice deep inside me said, don't wash them yet. Not yet, not yet, not yet. One more time with passion. Ready? Ready, Lisa? Just now that was, um, was the Zoom. Uh, ready? Black socks, they never get dirty. The longer you wear them, the stronger they get. Just when I thought I should wash them, a voice deep inside me said, don't wash them yet. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Now, I've only done it twice, but I always do songs, especially new songs, three times because repetition strengthens the brain, the wiring, and, uh, sorry, experience. Experience strengthens the wiring, but repetition actually makes it even stronger. So... It's um because the child mightn't have heard that beat before. Like da, 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 da. so so the experience wires the brain. But if you repeat it and repeat it, repeat it, it strengthens, strengthens that wiring. So now can everyone, we don't normally throw inside, but can you all throw me your socks into the box? Thank you so much. Now, Lisa, can you see a pink rectangle box behind? Yes, next to oh, in front of the rainbow cushion which is celebrating all diversity that's it and oh it's old joe muddlecombe's hat <laughs> so let's put old joe muddlecombe's hat on her head here we go can everyone do this piece that's it old joe muddlecombe lost her hat she looked everywhere this way and that she walked down high street and everyone said Silly Joan Muddlecombe, you've got it on your head. What a duffer. One more time with passion. And you too, Khadija, ready? Here we go. So really, you can't see my knees, but normally you do slap on your knees. So pretend, do you slaps on your knees. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. Like the we will, we will rock you. So that, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, Joan Muddlecombe lost her hat. 
she looked everywhere this way and that. She walked down High Street and everyone said, silly Joan Muddlecombe, you've got it on your head. What a duff up. And I get you would know where the children's, uh, the street where they live, you would know or the street where your family day your home is. And I use that street. Instead of High Street, I use that street. So then I might say, who can see an a ball up there? It's an Aboriginal colours. It has, and there's also a Torres Strait Islander ball. Okay, so uh, Lisa, do you want the Aboriginal ball or the Torres Strait Islander ball? The Torres Strait Islander okay. one. So I will get that. And as you can see, so then I would talk regardless if they're three months old or seven years old, I'd say, and as we know, the black represents the skin and the green represents the grass, the blue represents the white, and I would go through it because that's embedding. It's not just today we're in Nadoc week, we're going to talk about that. So then I would get sit them down and I would just roll the ball to them. Bumblebee, bumblebee, can you sing your name to me? Those, the, the children who can't talk, they just go, just go <laughs> hello, Melinda. Everyone, hello, hello Melinda. Melinda. Bumblebee, bumblebee. Or I might, if they're really young, they might crawl off with that. So I just use this bumblebee. Bumblebee, bumblebee, can you sing your name to me? That's it. My name is Floyd. Hello, Floyd. So I sing all the same songs, whether it's in early years primary or to infants. It just I just use different props. Or I might say, oh, look at my beautiful bundles, wedge tail eagles. They're the creator spirit and uh, designed by an Aboriginal elder. And say if there's two children there, one is uh, Khadija and one is Zainab. So I would do two large bundles flying to, and Zainab lives in uh, Newtown. Uh, two large bundles flying to Newtown. One named Zainab, one named Khadija. Fly away, Zainab. Fly away, Khadija. Come back, Zainab. Come back to G G Khadija. And then I'd say, then I'd say, um, Apple, would you like a turn? Would you like to use the bundles or would you like to use the wars, which are crows in Wurrung language? Or, you know, another day I might say, would you like to use the little butterflies? I've got a purple butterfly or I've got an orange butterfly. Which one would, which one would you like thinking. to use, Muhammad? Do you think props are really important in music? For me... If, if a child is nervous, it's something for them to hold. And when children are relaxed, that's when they learn. Same with an educator. If an educator is nervous to tell a story, I'll use a book. So if an educator is nervous to sing a song, well, the, the helping um, using a prop. But also I spoke about literacy early years um, for the language. The language, you've heard my language. Who can see the pink rectangle box? Who can, can you see the, the purple um, one and the orange one? So I'm always talking about language as well. Who, did you see my red long gloves? Uh, and I'm also using, so the, the street name of where we, our family daycare home is, I'm using names and I'm also doing turn taking so bumblebee, bumblebee, can you sing your name to me, is better with a bumblebee or with a ball. So, Louise, you've got a repertoire of songs that yes. you've obviously been using over a long time. What, you know, ever, I know nothing. I know no songs. I can't, you know, what if yeah. I'm an educator in that position? Well, because I, I teach at uni and I have to go to centres sometimes and assist my students, I see teachers that have been there forever and say um, to the children, what song do you want to sing? And they say, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star or Ba, 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 Chip. And then the teacher says, oh, that one again. You ask them. You ask them. You only need five songs that are different, like I've just given you five. I've done old go muddle. Go. 
And that was in a poem, old Joan, old, old John Muddlecombe lost his cap, silly old chap, because for the last 240 years, everything has been male. So I just changed it to Joan Muddlecombe and my auntie died and my mother said, uh, do you want any of her hats? Auntie Leslie's got 50 hats. I said, of course, I want them all. I'm in early childhood and theatre. So this is one of her hats. So it's just, um, it. what was the question? Do you need to use props? Yes. No, 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 I said no. If you don't know anything. Oh, no, about the songs. That's right, my confidence. So if you, and I'm going to send you the words to this, and if you want to see me doing it, it's on um, it's on my uh, web page. If you that article that I wrote, stop me doing Facebook, doing it on Facebook with the Veggie the dog. Do you remember Lisa uh, in 2020? So I did all these poems because I couldn't see my students. So I did them with the dog. And okay, so, so I'll, I'll on, get on, I just have to, so so then so this is the songs, Lisa. So there's black socks. There's black okay, socks. cool. Okay, and I'll give everyone the link to you performing them. But what about things like Spotify and CDs? Like, they're are they great. good Can or I, bad? No, there's no good or bad. I know I'm very binary, but there's no, um, there's, um, I, I'll just, I just wanted to say this, that I put these on the wall and I'll say to a child, go and choose a song. So there's only the, so then they don't know that that's, um, they know that that's ten little fingers because it's got the gloves, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with Spotify. I use it. I use um, Spotify for fast, slow, and then I get them to put a costume on, which I'll show you. I spared no expense. They're just. I put a sign when I was working in early childhood. I put a sign on the door saying, "Any parents have got any old material?" So they go, and I just cut a hole in all of them, and so they just put them here. And I'll just have a fast, a 10 seconds of fast song. So they, and then a 10 second of slow song. So I have a whole heap and they've all got, so they can either use them as scarves or, and once, and I've got beautiful Aboriginal fabrics as well. What, what bothers me is when I walk into a family daycare home or a service and the wiggles is pumping, there is nothing wrong with the wiggles but it doesn't have to be on all the time. And they parents would use that at home. So it's good for you in family daycare to use diverse music, a whole range of music. I don't use any children's music. I might use a little bit of Strauss, a little bit of ACDC, a little bit of Elvis, like in a, um, in a row, a little bit of African music, a little bit of... Um, Jeffrey Gurumul Yinapindu music and then use the uh, Aboriginal fabric. So, and I have uh, a, a, on my Spotify, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. But when it's blaring, I think that it's not, um, it's not beneficial to children. Sleep time, you have soft music on, absolutely. So does that answer your question? And also, oh. to me, it's, you've got to be an active participant. So in this, it's a call and response, whereas it, in when you're just listening to music and if they're just listening to it while they're doing ex other activities, it's um, passive. Having said that, for some children, it actually relaxes them when they're doing their drawing and they have music in the background. So there's, that's why I said there's no right or wrong. Explain a bit about music and movement. Like why is movement so connected to music? Because when we hear music, our body just wants to move. And, and also children are born to move. It's innate in them. It's years ago or back in, you know, in, in, um, before colonisation, we didn't have houses and, and stoves and all of that kind of stuff. They were out. They were, they were finding the wood. They were singing. They were dancing. It's all part of our intrinsic being and movement comes naturally. So when teachers say, oh, you need to sit still and do this clapping, whatever, that's just, it's just, uh, it's nuts. So you can put on, say, soft music and say, 
have a listen to this music. What does it make you feel that you want to do? And then when you put on the fast music, their bodies start going fast. So they're listening to that. It also teaches children about spatial awareness, where they can move, how their body works, how their voice works. So it's all, it's not separate. I'm at the moment, I'm just teaching music at um, Deacon. However, I said to them, I will be teaching drama, music and dance. I'll focus on music because to me, it's all, it's all part of it. It's the creative arts. It's the creative arts. And there is not one without the other. Okay. So how long, you know, within a day, how much time should a family daycare educator be allocating to music? Well, if it was me, I would be doing 80% because I'd say, this is how we wash our hands, wash our hands, wash our hands. Or, you know, I'd say um, uh, if you're wearing, if you're wearing orange, if you're wearing orange, you can go and sit at the table for lunch now. If you're wearing a hat, if you're wearing a hat, you can go outside if you're wearing a hat. So all my transitions, all my routines, I would do it. I would pick up my tambour or, and I would be saying, um, Lisa's beating on her drum, on her drum, on her drum. Lisa's beating on her drum, then she stops. And Lisa might stand up and start um, moving. Lisa's skipping to the beat, to the beat, to the beat. Lisa's skipping to the beat, then she stops. So you'd really use it that much, I mean. Uh, yes, because can, it's it's me. And can I just ask a question? I live with someone who um, music is very distracting to her learning because she has to tune it out before she can focus. Mm. Have you ever found children that um, music isn't good for them? Well, that's that was what I was talking about before. When you go into a, a infant toddler's room and it's very busy and then you've got the wiggles blaring and you've got children with who learn differently uh, we have to look at multiple perspectives and for some children it increases their anxiety so that's why I'm not a fan of music blaring in the background because it's um however for some children soothing music supports their learning while they're drawing or while they're doing something and like else. everything else it's just a matter of you knowing your children yeah? exactly because there's no hard and fast rule uh, with that okay. because everyone's okay different. so louise someone tells me that you're doing a special piece of music at the moment do you want to put in a bit of a plug for oh, that oh yes we're doing a um uh a national quality framework the musical and that is coming to sydney next and week who's doing that that's dr red ruby scarlet and myself and i i only met her on facebook because i'm only on facebook for work for early childhood and I, I was reading her post and I thought, oh, she has music as a background and drama. So I contacted her and said, uh, I'm doing this keynote at a conference. Would you like to do a song with me? And she said, sure. And so I'd never met her before. She came to my house. She learned the song in about a second and a dance. And then the rest is history. She said to me, uh, and she's in early childhood, of course, and she said, let's do a musical. I said, I'm not doing a musical. No way. I just want to enjoy. You know, I love just doing it for fun. Anyway, now we're doing it. So tomorrow we're in Rosebud in Victoria. Next week we're in Sydney. We're in the Gold Coast. We're in Perth. We're in Rockhampton. We're in Newcastle. We're in, oh, my goodness. So, so if people want to see you perform about the National Quality Framework, where do they, how do they do? Exact, well, do they on... On, I'll put it on the, it's, it's on the Multiverse Red Ruby Scarlet webpage. And I pretend that I'm the coordinator because I'm, that was my role, usually, you know, for the last, you know, probably 15 years. And Red pretends she's the educator and she complains about documentation. And I say, come on, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. Or she complains about the quality improvement plan or she complains that she has to take photos of the children and send them to the parents. No, you don't have to do that. It doesn't say you have to do that. So it's all of that. And, of course, we put it to music. We sing and dance because we believe that that's how if people are enjoying themselves, well, then they will learn. 
Okay, I want to ask you one final thing. What's, yeah, and then I have to say a goodbye song. Yeah, what's your favourite song of all? Oh, my goodness. My favourite song of all. Well, I have a range. Rita Franklin, I love any of hers. Yeah. I love her. And the ones that move me that I cry, you know, oh, they will walk through the, you know, that, oh, your head up high, all of that. But I guess any song from a musical just, I cannot sit still. So having said that, put your gloves on, I'll pretend you got let everyone, let your hands loudly clap, clap, clap. Let your fingers loudly snap, snap, snap. Close your eyes, fold your arms and quiet be. Let your eyes go wide awake. Let your fingers shake, shake, shake. Touch your nose, touch your cheek. Wave bye-bye. See you next week. Not really. But thank you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Louise. I think that'll give people lots of inspiration. And if That's you good. your song lists and stuff, I can put that up on the website. Yeah, people. yeah, I will. And just to finish off. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, was out to get me. Oh, so I'm